Hello guys and welcome back. And this time we're going to do something a little bit different. This time we're going to try and upgrade my welder. Uh, as you can see this is a, a Clark Weld MIG 160EN Turbo. This welder is oh, maybe 10-15 years old. I'm not sure the exact age. I bought it second hand. But this is the welder I've been using for uh, the last while and as I'm sure you've heard me saying before, my welds are not brilliant. Um, and it's slowly become clear to me that part of the problem with my welding, apart from me being completely rubbish at it, is that my welder has seen better days. As you can see, the um, umbilical, if that's the right term for it, has been repaired in several places. Um, the earth wire, earth clamp, is anemic to say the least. The earth clamp is part of the problem. The umbilical is part of the problem. And I'm the main part of the problem. But, hopefully if we can remove the issues from the welder, uh, then I'm going to be the only problem and hopefully it'll not be quite so bad and my weld will be a little bit more consistent. I have on order a new umbilical for it and it's going to be what's called a Euro cable which basically means I'm going to remove this completely, put a new uh, screw on a new facing on here or adapter on here and connect that all into the welder and then the new umbilical will just uh, clamp into it. But for now we're going to do the earth and we're going to go from this anemic rubbish thing to this thing. This is a 400 amp clamp and I presume that's something like a, a 100 amp clamp. This is 25 millimeter squared, uh, which as you can see is significantly different to that, which is maybe 10 if we're lucky. It's going to be four meters long, the same as the umbilical. So I guess the first thing I need to do is to measure out four meters. Uh, like I said, the umbilical I've ordered is a four meter one, so if we make the earth the same length, I think that makes sense, doesn't it? Uh, something like that anyway. Sense if I'd sort of this out before it started. Three meters. There we go. Four meters. Ow! That hurt. a sharper pair of cutters would have made sense. There we go, sorted. Let's get rid of this. Sort out the bleeding. Uh, why do I always cut myself every time I go to do something? I'll be back in a second. Alright guys, all fixed up. We can get on with the job. So, what we're going to do first of all is uh, we'll not crimp that. We're going to crimp an end on first. <clears throat> so to do that, it's 25 millimeter cable. I have 25 millimeter crimps, and I have a crimping tool. Checking, you can see that. Crimping tool, which I recently purchased off eBay. Uh, this is a 16 ton version of the crimping tool. Now, one would have thought that if we were going to crimp 16 millimeter cable, sorry, 25 millimeter cable, 25 millimeter crimps, we would use 25 millimeter 
dies for a crimping tool. But unfortunately this particular crimping tool, while it seems to be pretty powerful as far as the uh, mechanism is concerned, these dies are terrible. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'll just hold it up for you. Uh, that's your 25mm. Turn it around. You can see there, they're not perfectly made, but worse than that, they're actually too big. Um, I'll show you what I mean. If I was to take that out and put these in, put that back in again, turn that to off for some reason. I have no idea why off, but we'll start to clamp it up. Now, first of all, we'll cut the um, We'll cut the insulation back. So that is a lovely tight fit. As you can see, those are 25 millimeters squared. If you see that, 25 millimeter crimps and 25 millimeter cable. Nice, neat fit. So one would expect that you would put them into the 25 millimeter dies and clamp that, clamp that up, let me just tighten that up. Okay, uh, on. Right, right, right. You would think, you just do that, and that, and give it a good squeeze. And you would think that that would be a good fit, and you'd be wrong. It just fell out. So I don't know what the manufacturers were thinking of when they made this tool, but as you can see, it has crimped it, but nowhere near enough to um, to secure the cable. So not impressed by that. So what I had to do the last time, well, the first time I was practicing with this, was I used the 25s the same way as that way, as, as I did there now. And then I took a 16 and actually filed it out slightly. So it's not perfect or even close to perfect. But hopefully we'll stick that in. I think I got this time. But not impressed with those guys, but they're so slack. Yep. Put You can see it's a lot better crimped. Now it does, does, it's not a perfect crimp, but it's a whole lot better than it was. And there's no way that's coming out now. In fact, if I was to turn it round, turn you round, get this rubbish out of the way. Put that in there. I can pull with all my strength and I'm not pulling that out. So, or at least most of my strength, and that hasn't budged. So, that's a pretty good crimp. Happy with that. Okay, so I'll open this up and take this out. I'm going to screw that first.
Right, just so as you can see, I managed to get that clamped on there. So it's not too bad. And that's nice and tight there. Good. So this, if I was to pull on that, it doesn't move it. So that's the earth sorted. All right, guys, big excitement. A new parcel just arrived today from, I can't see who the company is that sent it to me. I can't remember. I'll, uh, I'll post a link to it in the description anyway when, uh, when I'm p posting this video. But see if you can guess what this is. You can see that it is my new Euro torch, complete with adapter so that it can screw it onto the front of my welder. Mm. Yep. That basically sits on the front of the welder. And Ooh. and this then plugs into it. I got. So now I have to get fit of yeah, 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 almost big. So now I have to fit it to my welder. Well, here's instructions. Before attempting to fit, make sure the machine is turned off and unplugged. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hmm. Right. Who needs those? So I guess the first thing we need to do is get the get the wire right. Yeah, forgive me if I look like I don't know what I'm doing here because it's so long since I've actually done any work with this welder, I actually don't know what I'm doing. There you go. Right, so that's right. So I now have to. Disconnect that. And got that wee cable tie. That. Okay, so it's the old earth, I presume. Let's get those two screws. Now, I did watch a video by a chap who did this job and he said something about hidden screws, hidden bolts yeah, uh, on my luck, if I take these screws out there will be hidden bolts somewhere which will drop down inside Feeling there's something on the other side. There's, of course, there's no door on the other side. I have to take off the cover. Off now. Tip. Wait a minute. There we go. And off she comes. Right. I'll bring you around and show you the inside of me welder. Those are big.
at the size of those coils. Wow. It's quite a, a bright evening, so sorry if you can't see very well. Not easy to adjust the light in the camera. So that's the inside of my welder. Anyway, the bit I was looking for was those two captive nuts. <coughs> sorry, not captive nuts, those two spinning nuts have to be taken off so that we can get this off. Right, I'll do that now. Get a pair of sort of long pointies. Right. There we go. Number two. So that releases that. What I need to do is a tick note of exactly where this is the um, the inside of the of the I suppose you call it the umbilical I don't know I'm not sure what you call it but uh, the torch so just take a note of exactly where that is what I'll do is I'll take a photograph of it and then I'll have reference for when I'm fitting the new one. About there, cut it and fill it out, whichever. So right, and I may have to reuse that connector. I'm not sure. We'll see. Two wires. I presume those are the two wires. So they'll need to be attached to that connector. This is not going to be simple, as you can see. It looks like we're going to have to make some sort of a mount on the front so that that can come in like that. This is uh, all nicely machined. The threads in this are really, really smooth, which you don't necessarily expect, but it's nice to see. Right. That's the bit that the cable goes up into. Just make sure you can see that. That's the bit the cable goes goes, or the sorry, the wire goes through. Gas goes in there. Wire goes in there. Switch. So, the question is, how are we going to do that? How are we going to make that sit? Let's just see how far out it has to sit. Probably we don't need this anymore. Sit at about there. <laughs> mm. I think this is going to have to be cut down. I've just realised I was being an idiot. I forgot about this. <laughs> the, uh, the little mounting thing for it. Uh, now, the only thing is, there's a slight slope on the face, front face of this uh, welder. So to get that dead straight, I'm gonna to have to space it out a bit, but that's not a big deal. Hmm. So all I need is probably a few washers in here would do rightly. Screw these ones up tight. And for this, I'll just have to whack off a bit of that threaded bar just to, to, to make it fit nicely. I think we're we're on to a winner here. This is gonna work.
I'm going to try and mount this face plate first and then we'll take it from there. Drill the holes first, get the face plate mounted, try and get as square as possible, as vertical as possible, or as square to this as possible, and then we'll take it from there. I'm assuming this lumpy bit goes at the bottom. Probably to support it when the cable's hanging down. I'm assuming that's what that's for. That's where it's going anyway. So you can see what it is I'm trying to achieve here. I'm trying to make sure that this thing here is dead in line with where the wire comes feeds through. So that's the that's the goal. Start with taking 20 mil off here. Don't want to take too much off and get it wrong. Okay, so 20 mil is to there. Give or take. Question is, is that a suitable place for that to be? Hmm. I'm gonna have to cut that down too. Safety squints were on, I'm safe enough. Photograph and see where it was before. Okay, well, as you can see from the photograph, the the internal part of the came very very close. Hmm, probably a bit too close. I would imagine that would be okay. What's the straight up? You know, it is what it is. In an ideal world, I would have a nice little crescent shaped or crescent or shaped thing for to go on there, but this will do the job. That's okay. So now I need to try and figure out how I'm going to tighten these up because they probably won't stick out very far the other side anymore. Right. 
two tiddly screws there. And the torch liner apparently you just push the correct there you go, it's just sticking out just enough. You can see it there. Two nuts from in there. Clamping down on the thing I want clamped down on, so that's all good. And there you go. There's one your torch fitted and it's solid. Good, good, good. Just a very quick word, guys. I'm going to butt in here. Uh, if you've been watching carefully, or if you've done this before, you'll have noticed my fundamental flaw in the connecting of my Euro torch. Yeah, I forgot to put this connection in. Uh, so I had the whole thing bolted together and out trying to do some welding. <laughs> and of course, <laughs> there was no spark at all because I didn't have the positive connected. Um, yeah, I realised that as soon as I went to use the welder and it didn't give any spark, so uh, well done if you spotted it. If you didn't, <laughs> don't be making the same mistake I did. That'll be grand. Now, this just needs to be fed out through a hole that's far too small to go out through. Okay, we're back. So my theory is, if I was to pull that trigger now with this plugged in, that that should work. So, let's plug it in and see what happens. I'm going. Sounds good. If you've done this job before, you'll probably be aware of what I'm going to say now. And that is that there was one other thing that I hadn't accounted for, um, and that is the gas. Now, the way this old uh, handle works on the, the from the Clark welder is when you pull in the switch, not only does it switch on the, uh, the, the power for the welder, but it also allows the gas to flow. Euro torches don't have valves in them to stop the gas flowing. They just let the gas flow. And you're supposed to have a solenoid somewhere in your welder which uh, turns the gas off and on. Now, when I ordered the kit, I didn't know that I would need to order a solenoid as well. So, I've ordered the solenoid, it's arrived, and it's been fitted and is working. So, um, we'll take you through the rest of it now and show you how I fitted the solenoid. So when we last left off with this video, I suddenly realized that I needed one of these. And this is a solenoid for the, the gas flow. As you can see, oops, turn the screen around. There you go. And on the back, just push the gas hose on there. That should be nice and simple. Okay, well that's the uh, the hose cut the length, sort of, and secured on with a cable tie as per the instructions. Okay, so we've had a quick look at the instructions and it looks like I'm going to have to 
take the top off again and go around the other side to get at the connections. Right guys, well after a significant amount of faffing around I figured out where the solenoid has to be connected and of course I've already done it. <laughs> I've I've cocked it up from the start. Um, I brought the negative wire in and put it into here assuming that the positive would be what would be getting switched and it turns out it's not if the negative gets switched so just to show you what I mean I have the positive of my meter going into mains in that's coming in from the power switch and the negative of the meter goes up to uh, I think it is the it's one of the other switches I can't remember what it is for now uh, where does it go to? goes down to the min max switch so if I turn this on we get no volts if I hit the switch we get 240 volts so that's the way I'm going to have to wire this so I'll get that done now right guys well after a lot of faffing around trying to find a piece of hose pipe that would go from my gas bottle to the the back or I have the the back of the solenoid sticking out I finally found some which I've forgotten I had it's just old uh, silicon vacuum pipe actually but it seems to work fine and I have the the feed loosened off so it'll not feed so I'll turn it on now turn it on there turn it on there as I pull the trigger the gas comes out so that's working perfectly now and I'm ready to start welding again my welding is pretty rubbish as you're going to see but I can usually make stuff stick together so First time I have ever been able to lay down a bead of weld like that. Ever. And I'm not saying it's good. That's a heck of a lot better than I've ever done before. And all thanks to changing to a Euro torch on my welder. Worth its weight in gold.